Lions Rock Productions. The Anglo-Americans were going to use their industrial advantages so they wouldn't suffer the sort of losses that Britain and France had lost in World War I. And it was a brilliant strategy because when the war was over, the combined American and British losses of uh, men in uniform at the, you know, their entire armies was together about 900,000, whereas the German army probably lost somewhere between three and four million. We don't have the precise figures. So it, it was a strategy that, that paid off. That's important to remember, I think, because we, we tend to look at American strategy in a vacuum. We say, well, why wasn't the Sherman tank as good as a panther or the tiger? And we don't say, well, because the panther and tiger rolled right off in a factory in America had to ship these armored vehicles 3,000 miles, and therefore they could only be a certain size for a certain weight for a crane. And they could, couldn't really get over much over 30 tons, whereas a Tiger was 40, 45, and Panther might have been 35. So a lot of these things that we see as uh, mistakes or foibles or wrongheaded uh, industrial policy weren't really, they were deliberate. Mm -hmm. and so when people say, well, the Germans killed more Americans than the Americans killed Germans in the continent, and therefore they were superior. Well, part of that was predicated on a endemic systematic American strategy to, before you go over the next hill, blast it with artillery. Before you go into that valley, bring in uh, Thunderbolt air support, fighter support. And that was not to uh, incur the type of casualties that might have undermined morale at home. <laughs>